Hey everybody, this is Troy with eBuzz Central. Today we're taking a look at Garuda Linux XFCE, Harpy Eagle. But before we get started, please do me a favor. Please like, subscribe, or follow my channel. It doesn't cost anything, and if you end up not liking me, you can always unsubscribe. If you like what the channel's doing and you want to support the channel, you can buy us a cup of coffee, or better yet, become a patron to the channel over on Patreon. Those links are in the description below. If you download Garuda Linux, throw it on a USB, open it in a virtual machine, this is the screen you're met with. Like I said, we're in the XFCE environment. You get the welcome screen, and it gives you some tools and links right off the bat. First thing they're going to tell you about is Garuda Assistant. If you click on Garuda Assistant, this opens up, and you've got System Update, Refresh Mirror List, which is something that's very important before you download or update the system. Make sure you refresh the mirror list. That way you've got the most up-to-date links and the quickest links in the repository so everything can go really fast and smooth. Refresh your key rings for passwords. Reinstall all packages. Remove database lock. Remove orphan files. That'll just remove the packages that are orphans and have no primary application anymore. You can edit your repositories. You can clear package cache, and then you can clear all caches. If you're running the BTRFS file system, or ButterFS, or BetterFS, whatever you want to call it, you can click on that and come over here and make any adjustments that you need to make over here. Then, of course, you've got your snapper settings. Now, this does come with snapper, and it also has time shift, depending on which one you're more comfortable using. They're just basically ways to back up your system. Should you ever have a problem in the future, you can come back in and restore it to a point in time where there was nothing wrong with it. I usually recommend doing this after you have it completely set up, have all your applications that you're going to use installed, have all your settings the way they are, zip on over to Snapper or Time Shift, which we will look at here in a second. Take a snapshot of your system so that way you've got that protected should anything happen. System Components, you can come over here and it'll tell you you've got Pulse Audio. You can actually get rid of Pulse Audio and go with Pipewire if you choose to. Your videos, your network manager, your con man, your firewall, Bluetooth, Samba, printing and scanning, virtualization, and input methods. You've got a lot of control over this operating system. Then go over to settings, default shell, your bash shell. And then you can also have install default shell configs, HBlock, DNS, performance tweaks, power save tweaks, guest user support, and then right click emulation. System specs, it'll just give you your specs on your system. And then other diagnostics, you can set this up if you want to. So let's close out of that. Back over to the welcome screen. You've got Garuda Settings Manager. If you come in here, it will let you adjust your hardware configuration. Kernel that you're running on, if you open the kernel, right now you're running 5.10.69. I think we're at kernel 5.14 at present. So this is a good LTS kernel. You're safe here. But if you do have issues with some hardware, you might look at updating that kernel to a newer kernel and it might work for you. So let's close out of that. And then Garuda Gamer. Right here, it gives you the ability to install any of the gaming launchers that you want, Wine, tools that you might need for setting up controllers and things like that. You've got Steam, Mini Galaxy, Itch, Emulation Station, Game Hub. And then on Wine, of course, you've got Wine, Proton, Proton Tricks, Wine Tricks. And then down here, if you want to like get SE controllers so you can set up your controller, you can do that as well. And then other tools, whether it be Go Overlay, Steam Tinker Launcher, Fast Game, and then Game Device, UDev, Xbox Drivers, all kinds of things you can do down here. And then, of course, you can go to Games, and they can give you Action Adventure, Arcade, Casual. You can download Linux games right from here. And then, of course, Emulators. You've got the Dolphin Emulator, RetroArch, Stella. You have tons of emulators in here that you can just click and then apply, and it will download it and install it. So let's go ahead and close out of that. Garuda Network Assistant, Garuda Boot Options, Garuda Brute Repair, Partition Manager, Add and Remove Software, System Cleaner, Quick Access, Restore Snapshot, CH Root, or Install Garuda. Then over here, you've got links to their website, Wiki, Frequently Asked Questions, Arch User Repository Help, Forum, Element, GitLab, Telegram, Twitter. And then web services, you can add Bitwarden, CryptPad, Google, whatever you want to do there. So let's go ahead and close out of that. Let's go ahead and right-click on the desktop. You've got Create Launcher, Create URL Link, Open Terminal. 
Let's go ahead and open up a terminal. Let's see what kind of resources we're using. Let's see if they have HTOP. They do have HTOP installed. At present, with Firefox open and the terminal open, I'm sitting at 1.25 gigabytes being used of the 1.93 gigabytes. And I'm going to go ahead and open up Firefox. At present, I'm on Garuda's website, which is garudalinux.org. I will include that in the description below. And when you come to their website, it has some base information for you. Talks about installation, talks about the beauty of it, the BTRFS file system, Garuda Assistant, the Arch User Repository, privacy settings, graphic user interface for managing drivers, for installing curated applications. And then when you go over to download, it lets you know that it is available in KDE, XFCE, GNOME, LXQTK Win, Wayfire, Qtile, Bspawn, and of course i3 Window Manager and Sway. And they do have a community edition out, which is Garuda Mate. And then you do have Garuda Linux Bare Bones, and it lets you know advanced users only. So let's go ahead and close out of Firefox. And now that Firefox is closed and we just have a terminal open, we're running at 868 megabytes of the two gigabytes I have issued. So let's go ahead and close out of that. Now we're going to right click and desktop settings. And you've got different wallpapers here. I just want to pick a different one. So let's go with that. And we will move that out of the way. That's a good looking wallpaper right there. And then we'll come back up. And you've got your menus. You can adjust your desktop menu, your window list menu. And then, of course, your icons. Icon type, icon size, icon orientation. You can change that if you wanted to. Arrange icons. And then it's going to take them horizontal as opposed to vertical. Show icons. And then any icons you don't want to show on your desktop, you just come down here. Click on them. And, they, of course, they will disappear. So we will go ahead and close out of that. Now you've got one panel. On the bottom of the panel, you've got power, you've got date and time, notifications, battery percentage, sound, internet, and then, of course, your desktops. Now, if you right-click on the panel, you can edit the panel. Panel preferences. Displays automatically hide the panels on Never. If you want to set that up, you can set it up to always hide or intelligently hide. And then, of course, row size. You can make the panel bigger if you choose to. I'll go ahead and ramp that up a little bit. And then appearance, you can switch it to a dark mode, switch it off of a dark mode. With the theme that's already being used, it's in a dark mode. And then icons adjust size automatically. So if you do download an application and it's got an icon that's a little different size than what you already have on your system, it'll adjust it automatically so it won't look out of place. And then items, things that you can add to the panel, everything from a whisker menu, separator, power management plugin, action buttons, all that is available right here. So we're going to go ahead and close out of that. Come to the left side of the panel. You've got Firefox, which we've already looked at. Let's go ahead and look at the file manager, which is Thunar. I like Thunar because it's a lightweight, fast file manager that just lets you get your work done. Over here, you've got your usual suspects. And then you've got your home folders right here. So that's Thunar File Manager. Let's go ahead and close out of that. And we've got Terminal, which we've already looked at. So let's go ahead and open the Garuda app menu. Come up to Accessories. You've got Application Finder, Bulk Renamer, Calculator, GTK Hash, Modem Manager, Software Token, Task Manager, USB Image Writer. And then, of course, you have your Task Manager. And your Task Manager will tell you you're using about 30% of the CPU, 154 processes, we're using 51% of the 2 gigabytes of RAM that I've issued, and then 16% of the swap memory. So let's minimize that and close. Back over to the app menu, down to development. You've got an icon browser, meld, micro, graphics. You've got color picker, peak, Restretto image viewer, internet, Firefox, Geary for your mail client, transmission for your torrents, multimedia, you've got Audacity, Celluloid, Pulse Audio, Equalizer, Office, you have Abbey Word in a dictionary. So if you want an Office suite, you're going to have to download LibreOffice, FreeOffice, OnlyOffice, whatever your preference is. Login window, mouse and touchpad, panel, Pulse Audio preferences, session startup, XFC terminal settings. And then, of course, you've got system. You'll have Alacrity, Bleachbit, Garuda Welcome, Garuda root system maintenance, HTOP, PACE, setup assistant, and then of course you can power on or power off. You know, that's just a quick look at Garuda XFCE. I know that the KDE version is really popular, but this is a very good looking version of a solid operating system. If you like XFCE and you haven't tried Garuda, 
I recommend you zip on over to their website, download it, throw it on a USB, put it in a virtual machine, and take it on a test drive. If you do that, please let me know in the comments below what you think. Please do me a favor before you go today. Please like, subscribe, or follow my channel. It doesn't cost anything, and if you end up not liking me, you can always unsubscribe. If you like the videos and you like what the channel's doing, please support us. You can do that by buying us a cup of coffee or zipping on over to Patreon and becoming a patron to the channel. Those links will be in the description below. Thank you for watching my video, and I will see you in the next video.